All right, so to continue with uh, random variables, we have what's called discrete and continuous random variables. So we're going to determine the difference between discrete and continuous random variables, discuss a notable continuous random variable that we've already talked about, and then discuss two important rules of random variables that we did not talk about last time. So a discrete random variable is a random variable that only has a limited or finite amount of probability possibilities. Um, so like I always tell people if you can count them on your hand, that's discrete, it's finite. Each of the examples in the previous topic was a discrete random variable because they only have uh, a countable amount. Uh, if you can count the number of outcomes, then it's finite. A uh, continuous random variable is a random variable that has an infinite amount of outcomes. So infinite is kind of a strong word, you just can't really count them. Um, basically, you, nothing's really truly infinite, um, but uh, yes, it would be so vast that you, you could never get them all. I guess it's not true, there are things that are infinite, but um, just have a vast amount that you can never actually count them all. Um, so we see an example of a, of a continuous random variable, and that is the normal curve. So if we do a quick review on the normal curve, um, suppose that a certain automobile rep repair shop can repair any car on average of 135 minutes with a standard deviation of 40 based on the normal curve. So that means this particular place um, is 130, 40. So remember, that's the average of standard deviation. What is the probability of repairing of repair being less than 90 minutes? So what I'm going to do is, is again, I'm going to use my stat crunch as a review. If I pull up stat crunch, I'm going to go to stat calculators and then go to normal. And if I go in here, my mean is 135. My standard deviation is 40. And so I want to know what's the probability of repair being less than 90. So if I hit 90 in there and hit compute, I get a probability of 0 0.1303 or 13.03%. Okay, then... If I go the other way, so my second question says, what's the probability of repair being more than 180? One second. Uh, if I look at the probability of a pair being more than 180, so I have to go 180 and switch that over to greater than. Let's hit compute again real fast. Uh, it's about the same thing. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Um, then what is the probability of a pair being between 100 and 200 minutes? Um, so I got to change this to 100. I hit between, by the way, change this over. And then put this as 200, and it'll give me 0.7571 or 75.71%. And I'm going to flip back to my view in one second. There it is. Okay, so that's kind of our review of the normal curve. If you do it by hand, then you would just need this formula here, which would correspond to the first one would be 90 minus 135 over 40. Okay. All right, so... 
few new rules. Suppose that you have two random variables that can combine to be one random variable. How we can we combine it? So if we want to add the two expected variables, all we have to do is just physically add the two expected variables together. If I wanted to add the two variances together, um, all, again, all I have to do is add the two expect, uh, variances together. If I can wanted to subtract the two expected values from each other, all I have to do is basically subtract the expected values. This is the one that's a little bit different because you can't add, when you, when you want to subtract two variables, their distances, so you can't make them less than what they are. So when you get that, you would, you'd still have to sum them together. Um, it's a really weird formula, but just remember that since it's a distance, they have, it always has to be summed. Now there's no formula for standard deviation, so you have to base everything off of the variance formulas. And I'll show you how to do that. So. Let's take a look at this real fast. Suppose that the same auto repair that does the repairs N13540 also offers to wash your car when the repair is done. The time to wash your car is N29. What is the normal curve that represents a combination of both uh, the repair and washing of the car? So we need a normal curve with a new uh, expected value and a new standard deviation. Expected value being the average. So when it comes to expected value, all I need to do is just add the two expected values from the previous example. So 135 to 20, or 20 makes uh, 155. So all I have to do is add those together. When it comes to the standard deviation though, it's a little bit uh, harder because there is no rule for standard deviation. But there is a rule for the variance. So the very first thing I have to do is find the variance. And remember from my last thing, the standard deviation is the root of the variance. So that means the variance is the standard deviation squared. So 40 squared would give me 1,600. And 9 squared would give me 81. And now that these are the variances, All I have to do is add these together. And then, because I want the standard deviation, I then have to square root that 16, 81, and that'll give me 41. So this is my new a uh, normal curve. Now if I wanted to find the probabilities, it's the same as just applying it to a normal curve. So I'll flip this back over again. Uh, my mean was 155 and my uh, standard deviation is 41. If I want to know what the probability of being less than 100, go back to standard, change it to less than, and then hit 100 and hit compute. And that gives me point Oops, point zero eight nine nine. So low percentage, which makes some sense. Well, let's see if it takes greater than 250 minutes. Okay, so I do that, and that's even lower, and that's probably good because I don't want to sit there and have to worry about a repair for that long, so that's 1.02%. But well, it's probably that you can do it between 80 and 210. So 80, or sorry, 212 rather. So I do 212 and compute, and that gives me 0.8841 or 88.41%. Okay, again, I'll flip back real fast. And there is my percentages. Good. Again, you would just have to use that formula if you did it by hand. Okay, one more example. Nathan is a painter and he can typically paint a house on average 300 minutes with a standard deviation of 35 minutes, according to our normal curve. 
author is another painter who also paints a house but with an average of 180 minutes and a standard deviation of 12 minutes. If working together, the difference in their times is the time it takes them to complete a house. So what is the normal curve in this situation again? We're talking about a difference, so this time we're going to subtract. So once again, um, we have a average of 300 minutes and an average of 180. We want to find the difference between these two, and so that comes out to be 120. So 120 is my new my new average or my new expected value. And again, you can't to find the new standard deviation. You can't base it off of standard deviations. So you have to base it off of variances. So you're going to do 35 squared, and you're going to do 12 squared. So thirty five squared is one two two five or one thousand two hundred and twenty five and twelve squared is one forty four. So I want to add those together and I get one three six nine and then to find the final standard deviation because remember this is the variance. That gives me, so if I square root it, that gives me 37. So that means 37. And you add them again because remember the, the formula for a variance requires you to add them. It's weird, but it's a distance. A distance, you can't never make negative. Okay, again, then if you want to find what's the probability that it takes less than 60 minutes. Uh, well, let's walk back over to uh, StatCrunch. So, we're going to change our mean into 120, our standard deviation into 37, and change back to a standard. And we want less than 60 minutes. Uh, you got a 5% chance of that happening. Woo! Point zero five two four or five point two four percent. Uh, let's go the other way. Greater than three hours. So we want to change it in the minutes. Three hours is one hundred and eighty minutes. So that gives me. Oh, it's about the same. It's a little bit. Oh, it is about the same. Okay, and then uh, between 80 and 110, which probably should be pretty decent. Uh, 80 and 110, wait a minute, let me go back one, it said 60. No, not greater than 60. Okay, okay, that's good. All right, so then 80 and uh, 110. And that gives me 0.25 three six or twenty five point three six percent okay and that's it short and simple